Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I'm Topher. And for those of you who don't know and just randomly decided to click on my video, welcome to the channel. I'm Topher. Thank you for stopping by. So we're here to do a reaction, and we're diving into the latest episode of Why I Love Why, Season 2, Episode 6. At the end of Episode 5, um, there were, I don't know, lots of shenanigans happening. Um, there's some sketchy things happen between Emil and Mama. I said, there's something about Mama I'm just not trusting right now. And I don't know, something about that relationship's not sitting right with me. And Kelly is was eavesdropping in the gym thinking that Emil was, I don't know what she was thinking. Maybe he was cheating or something. I don't know. But then Benjo went to the restaurant to you know, go visit. And obviously Emil wasn't there because he was working out with Mama. And <sighs> Emil's sous chef was like the least helpful person in the world like lord jesus you, you could have very clearly just said he went to the gym with this lady but he was being all kinds of unnecessarily cryptic and giving benjo all kinds of complexes in his head so now who knows where things are who knows where things are going who knows where things are sitting i don't know and then at the end we also have that little flash of chloe there where she was feeling sick or something which I don't know. We we just got to dive in and see where these pieces are going to land. Guys, if you want to see more of our shows, guys, please don't skip the ads. I won't. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Already done. Ang nakaraan. Yes, and then there was also the Kelly and Pad stuff going on. Six. Parang dali dali na masaya bitawan ko na hao. Okay. Yung palakay ang kayo mo, galing talaga ni Mama. I love it. Yeah, so like this snare, I don't know what's going down. the avenue we're gonna go down okay <laughs> y'all are crushing me i need y'all to scooch over excuse me now can you leave me yes please I love the secret door. I'm not here to check on the status of the construction. Siguro. Siguro na over yung tayo. Ibinigay ko sa iyo yung papa. Alam ko naman na kamamatay lang yung papa mo last year. Hindi ka pasanay. Hindi ka pumpitensya sa mga. Diyan. 
conduct their businesses. Pero, nakikita ko si Lili ko sa inyo. Ay, kailan ko ang inyo? Yes, ma'am. Nung nag-uumpisa pa lang ako sa real estate business, magta-transition ko lang ako para magigulay na baba. Ang dami ko ko ako. Pinagtawalan ako. Kinutya, kinain. Hindi sila serious. But I prevailed. Pinatunayan ko sa kanila that the gender preference is not and never an issue. Sana, yan ang mabago sa buong mundo. I believe it. You are valid. I trust you. I like that. I like that she took the time to come and say, hey, this isn't about business, this isn't about work, this is just one person who's lived in the LGBTQ plus community to another person who also is in this business. I got your back. I believe in you. You can do this. Go on ahead. Okay. New credits. Okay. Okay, we've got all these strings tied around tied around wrists. All these threads interconnecting all the characters. Interesting. By the way, may kasama ako, kaibigan ko. He has a restaurant in Makati. His name is Emil. Hi. Nice meeting you. Elliot. Elliot. Okay. Elliot is cute. Hi, Elliot. Teka. Pops? Pops yung tawag mo sa kanya? Yeah. Why? Is there something wrong about that? Totoo naman ah. Ah, wala naman. Wala siya. Wala naman. Kaya kami na eh, kung di nang tatanong, tawag ko sa kanya, mama naman. Kaya Pops, mama, mama. Siya. Nandito na ako. Nandito na ako. Nandito na ako. Nandito na ako. Tara, magkakwento ako. Interesting. Ang dami natin pagkakwentuhan. Kita mo yun? Kakabili ko lang talaga nun. So, Emil. Welcome to Elliot's. Pops, anong gusto nyo kainin? Emil? Sige, kahit patungin ako ng menu nila. Yeah, sure. Ano ba dahil? There you go. Oh. Hmm, teka. Okay na yan. Nakalimutan mo ba? Ano? May amnesia ka na ba? Ayoko nakakita ng menu. So, anak, surprise us. Alright. Ah, teka. Wait, mas... Feel ko mas... Okay lang. Madalo ko yung kitchen ng anak mo. 
Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I'll go um, in the kitchen. Go and enjoy your thing. Okay, can I enjoy? Maybe I'm gonna get back. Come on. Okay, see you. Enjoy, guys. Thanks, Pops. <laughs> you sure? Oh, I'm not even gonna know. Lina. <laughs> Alam mo, Elliot, marketing management naman talaga ang course ko eh. Hindi kong hanatapos yung culinary school ko. Pero you know, I realized that I really have the passion for food. Elliot, don't seem to be here for a meal. At mahal mo yung ginagawa mo. Hindi mo yan matatako, lalabas at lalabas yan. You know what, Chef Emil? Gusto ko naman itong trabaho ko. In fact, hindi naman ako magpapagawa ng ganito kalaking restaurant. Hindi ko gusto yung trabaho ko. It's just that there's something bothering me. Mm-hmm, I can see that. <laughs> ano, anong ibig mo sabihin, Elliot? Bakit? Uh, dahil ba sa paps mo? No, ba, Elliot? Pakinggan mo lang yan, oh. Pakinggan mo lang yung puso mo. Magtiwala ka sa sarili mo. Thank you, Emi. Thank you. I'm confused. I'm confused. I'm confused. I'm confused. I'm confused. I'm Good on the way naman na. Pini-prepare na naman stuff, stuff ko. Niya. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Halika, upo kayo. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, Elliot naman. Hmm. Bakit naman kasi ganun? <laughs> Ganda ng kitchen ko, no? <laughs> Ang <Ulit> ka. <laughs> eh, hindi. Ito asing si Mama. Oh. Manggit niya sa akin na wala ka daw inspirasyon. Gina. Pops. Can I tell you something? Ano yun? What's bothering you? Hindi ko kasi. Naya kasi ako sabihin sa ito. Huwag kang mahiya sa akin ka man. Ama mo ako. Maintindihan kita. Open mo sa akin. Na kahit kailan, hindi ko alam kung mapapantay ang baba yung galing sa pulot. <laughs> Anak, don't compare yourself to me. You have your own given talents. You know, alam ko yan dahil nasubaybayan kita habang lumalaki ka. Andiyan yan sa'yo eh. You have the passion. I saw that in you. You don't like, you don't love only food. But you love preparing it for people. You appreciate that. It's within you. Dapat mong palabasin yan. Nasa sa atin yan eh. Anak kita. It's within our genes. Dapat mong ma-realize yan. Huwag mong kakalimutan yan. Thank you, Pops. Kaya lang hindi lang naman po yun. Hindi lang naman yun yung bumabaghabag sa isip ko. Huwag kang mahiya ka inyan. Para ko na rin siyang anak. Ah! Ang tawag niya, Mama! mama. Hindi ka yung kabit! Mama! Y'all need to calm down. Mainly because y'all blowing out the microphones. Ay, hindi! Sigurado ako, hindi ako nagkamali. Nagkitang-kita ko dun sa gym, Mama! Bilisan mo na! Saan pa tayo pupunta? Sa Tagaytay! Ano? Sa Tagaytay! Ah! 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 Since I was a child, I was so confused. 
mga klase ko yung mga kaibigan ko lagi ako tinutok sa kanila ba't ganyan yung tatay mo hindi ko alam kung sasabihin ko sa kanila hindi ko naman kasi alam talaga kung ano ka you're my pops but you act like a girl I don't know I don't understand pops make me understand can you Okay, anak. Ganito yun. It wasn't easy for me living as a gay person before when your grandfather and your grandmother was still around. I live in an era where it, it's so conservative na medyo tabu talaga kapag naging bakla ka. And alam mo, anak, kung naging bakla man ako noon, yung araw na nakilala ko ang mama mo. Aksidente man yun. Pero, it was a blessing. <laughs> Naging blessing ka. Dumating ka sa buhay ko. <laughs> Sana maintindihan mo that I had to do it, anak. <laughs> it was so hard. One day you will understand. You, you need to seek your own happiness. Kaya ako naging babae, anak. Kinailangan kong gawin yun. <laughs> But I'm so done with that, Pops. Wala na akong pakisa sasabihin nila. Simula ko yun. Kaya ko tayo paglaban. Salamat, anak. Simula ko yun. Salamat. Kaya ko tayo pagmalaki. <laughs> And, last thing, Pops. Can I request? Can I request something? Ano yun, anak? I feel like that would be the preferred. Yes. Like it's a very sweet moment. I'm just shocked that it hasn't happened already between them. Because it's not like he's like a teenager in high school or something. Like he's a grown ass man with a grown ass business. And I'm like. I'll talk afterward. Of course, fried the wheelies and chef ah, meal, my yes? carios and paella mixed up. Mm, look good <laughs> and taste good. I should know. <laughs> and of yes. course, my world famous paella negra. Oh, my chef tell you. Okay. <laughs> See, but like, how did they know where he was to follow? I mean, Kelly seems like she's still in her workout club. Well, no, they, they're very similar to her workout club. But I'm like, how how they know where he went? Wait for me, guys. Peace now. All right. See ya. Just deflecting. Hindi nila yung 
hindi yan eh. Siyang tumulong sa akin para magkalapit kami ulit ng anak ko. Eh, sabi niya, huli niya kayo sa gym. Di ba sabi mo? Ako? Oo. Oh. Oo siya. Mukha ba ako nag-gym? Oo. Oh. 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 Wait na lang, wait lang. Sino ba nagsabi sa inyo na mag-jowa kami? Siya nga! <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Benjo is getting those kind of feels from the damn sous chef at the restaurant, too. So it's it's not all Kelly. We can't blame everything on Kelly. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. I'm just the owner of this restaurant. <laughs> he says as he makes himself a plate. Yes. Yeah, we should always remember. We should always be careful about what we think and what we do. As trans women, we should always fight against discrimination, but we should lift each other up. Okay? Sorry, it's okay. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, Kat. Sorry, 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 Bakit? Diba ko pa sinasabi sa'yo mag-asawa si Benjo at si Emil? Paano nagawa sa kanila yun? I mean, she... Ano po pasok yan sa kukote mo? She didn't do it specifically, so I mean, you can't really yell at her. Chloe. Puporektahan ko ang pamilya ni Benjo. Gagawin ko yung lahat para mag-protectionan sila. Chloe. Sumamula akong mapuntahan pang hindi Benjo ang sumalo sa akin. Binigyan nila ako ng pagkakataon. Binuhay nila ako. Gusto mo ba maging kalina? Chloe, gusto mo ba na lumaki yung anak mo na walang ama? Kasi yun ang yari sa akin. Okay, but see, you're yelling at her like it's her fault, like she brought this on us. Chloe, yun ang yari sa akin. Natindi, madali. Chloe, come on! Again, why, why are you asking her what she was thinking? She was on the receiving end of this attack. Let's, let's call a spade a spade. I mean, I know y'all got something going on, but can, can, can we, like, focus something on her a little bit? She's going through a lot right now. Okay, again, stop screaming at her. Okay. 
Again, she was. Feelings upon feelings upon feelings. Okay, so I got feelings. Now before I address the big Chloe elephant in the room thing, let's backtrack and deal with the whole Devora, Emil, Elliot situation thing. Um Okay, so, like, the feelings I had in the last episode, the last couple episodes, where I was, I was getting this weird feeling between um, Devorah and Emile's relationship, and something just wasn't sitting right with me, I, I guess that's, 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 that was just me overthinking things and whatnot, because it seems like things were fine. Things, like, things were fine. She doesn't have ulterior motives, at least none that have reared their heads. Who knows? Maybe in the last couple episodes she'll turn out to be something else. I don't know. But that doesn't seem to be the direction of the going with her character, so those feelings I had before, we'll just dismiss them for now unless something pops up later on. Um, but now it just makes me question, like, why Emil needed to be involved in the first place. Like, I get, like, okay, yeah, she, she was the food critic, she came to the restaurant, visit, whatever, loved the food, and, you know, loved a meal, cool, great, fantastic. And, you know, maybe even striking up a friendship with him, cool, fine, fantastic. Um, and yeah, sometimes you get a new friend, and, you know, you, you spend so much time together, and your friendship blossoms very, very quickly. Cool, fine, whatever. But it just felt like Emil was playing this unnecessarily big role in her life and I don't know why like it's not like he was replacing her existing son because she obviously clearly had some level of a close relationship with her son even though they didn't they hadn't had whatever conversations about her being a trans woman or whatever yet um, still they had some sort of relationship where they see each other on a semi-regular basis and he was excited to see her come into the restaurant oh you haven't been in in so long and they have a very good cordial kind of relationship so it's not like you know she had this you know estranged relationship with her son and you know Emil was like this sort of like replacement for that like no she had a good relationship with her son so I don't know why Emil like sure Emil came took on the role of like a second son or something but I don't know why I don't know why he needed to and why he took on such an important role as like a second son in such a short span of time. I don't know why she got so attached to him so quickly. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, like it was very nice family moments that they had here. Like I was saying, I'm surprised that um, Elliot and Devorah hadn't had 
these conversations before just because like I'm saying he's not it's not like he's in high school or something where you know he's dealing with you know classmates and whatnot bullying him and what like he's he's a full he had to deal with that yes he was talking about like you know having to deal with classmates making fun of him or asking why your dad's this way and whatnot and all that kind of stuff like yes he had to deal with that and I would imagine like back then that's a conversation you would have with him um but I guess better late than never. It just surprises me that that conversation hadn't taken place because, like, I feel like once you reach a certain age, a certain maturity level, you know enough about life to know what is what. So, like, even if if I were divorced, son, and I, we, she and I never had this conversation about her being a transgender woman, and I grew up, all these feelings, all these experiences, kids bullying me, blah, blah, blah. Like, by the time I'm, I'm an adult, I know what being gay is. I know what being straight is. I know what transgendered people are. Like, I know these are things I know. I know what they are. Even if I don't live that kind of life or I don't associate or whatever, I know what they are. So, knowing what they are, like, I would be able to say, okay, well, clearly my, who I'm referring to as my dad right now, is a transgendered woman. He's living his life, her life, as a transgendered woman. So, I'm like... I'm not saying it's not a conversation that didn't need to be had, but it's just, it surprises me that these exchanges hadn't happened between them yet. Because it just seemed like something that need that is very long overdue. Um, it seems like Elliot's been holding on to these feelings for a very long time, along with his feelings of feeling inadequate and not being able to live up to Devorah's shadow, or live up to, you know, her legacy. And... Like, it's, it's nice that they got to have these conversations. Again, I just don't know why Emil needed to be the catalyst for it to happen. Because, like, it just... It felt like Emil was just kind of shoehorned into the family to say, Hey, you, you, your mom tells me you're uninspired. You should probably go talk to her or something like that. Like, it just felt like he was just put in this family dynamic for the sole purpose of getting them to talk to one another when I feel like they they are close enough that they could have just talked to each other and we didn't need a meal in this whole dynamic so weird dynamic but happy happy endings between them in the end and then again I don't know how Benjo and Kelly and Pads knew exactly where Emil and Devorah were heading so that they could follow them but you know that whole thing obviously turned out how it turned out and we didn't we probably could have had more repercussions or you know just like scolding as far as like hey we came here to bust you for cheating and I'm not cheating this person is like a second mom to me um, and who are you guys how did how did you guys find out what are these issues why why don't you trust me why like I felt like there's a lot of just trust issues going around that could have been explored or could have been touched on a little bit that just kind of were just glazed over like okay well honest mistake just let's not do it again yay everyone happy family let's eat food like it, it felt a little too neatly tied up in a bow like hmm um, but then in the end we have the whole Chloe thing which I do not like the way that these characters were treating Chloe in this situation because like obviously I don't know the exacts of what happened between Chloe and um, Benjo but from the way that they keep showing the scene happening it looks as though Benjo threw himself on Chloe Chloe was saying, no, 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 and now she's pregnant. So to me, that does not sound like somebody who was trying to seduce Benjo. Like, yes, we know in her in the early th days of her being here, she's like, oh, I love Benjo and I'm going to break them up and whatnot. Let's, yes, we know she came in here as the seductress to seduce Benjo. But in that actual scenario, she was not the seductress. She was the victim of, a, of sexual assault. Um, let's call it like it is. Um, so... I don't like the fact that while she is the victim in this scenario, everyone is treating her as though she is the aggressor, as though she is the one who um, orchestrated this, as though she's the one who attacked um, Benjo and got him to sleep with her. Like, it's it's very real. Blessed. 
this scenario happens in the real world all the time. And it, it's, it's not a new concept. Doesn't mean I like it. Um, but yes, it's not a new concept. So I guess applaud them for exploring this sort of theme and concept that, like I said, happens in the real world all the time where, you know, sometimes a victim of sexual assault. I don't want to get too political, but like sometimes we, we know women don't always get the level of respect or fair, like they just don't always, it's not always an even playing field sometimes when it comes to women, especially in these cases. Like things have changed, you know, we've got a lot of, we've made a lot of progress, Me Too movements, all this kind of stuff. But you know, in past, past years, past decades, past whatever, it's been kind of, it's been very easy to like discredit women's words like oh no she tried to seduce me oh she had it coming she she wore sexy clothes she brought it on herself she tried blah 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 and then we just bully the victim into feeling ashamed of you know things that they did to bring this on themselves when like no they were a victim of sexual assault like that's what it is so in this scenario that's very much what was happening and it makes me uncomfortable because i expect better from these characters i expect better especially from Lyndon. Um, sure, Ben and Emil, yes, they're adults, they're married, blah, 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 but sometimes they're still just immature kids at heart. So, yes, that whole little scenario at the end with the yelling and screaming at each other and all that, like, yes, that was just illustrating some ways that they are not fully matured in some senses. But, like, Lyndon, he seems to be someone who is very put together. He's lived life. He has a lot of life experience. And I just expect better from him. I expect... And I don't know how much he actually let Chloe talk. I don't know how much Chloe talked. I don't know what she said. I have no idea. They've not showed us anything of her talking. All they've showed us is her crying and people yelling at her for seducing Benjo and sleeping with him when that was not the case. So I don't know if she told her story at all, or maybe she's feeling ashamed, as you know a lot of victims do in this instance. Maybe she's feeling ashamed of what happened, the fact that these things happen. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. All I know is that we have a victim of sexual assault who is being turned, painted into the villain by everyone in the household. And I do not like it, I do not like it. Y'all know, Y'all know me by now. I've watched enough of these series where I dissect all this other stuff, and I, even if I don't like a character or I don't like someone, whatever, I try to rationalize in my head. I try to get both sides of the argument and just rationalize what drove them to this with, before I can just outright say, I don't like you or I don't like this. Like, I just try to understand the person and just get both sides of the story. So, like, this is what needed to happen here. We needed both sides of the story because I bet you if we got both sides of the story, we would see that one side of the story is Benjo's drunk ass came and attacked her and the other side of the story is she was attacked by a drunk ass Benjo. But nobody seems to be Nobody seems to be looking at it that way. They're just looking at, oh no, there's this woman who was trying, who was at some point trying to seduce Benjo and now she's pregnant. And it also, it's another one of those pet peeves that I have in general with just people, people in life in general, whenever someone in a relationship is unfaithful and the person who got cheated on yells, screams, blames, curses out the other woman or the other man, the other person. When it's like, yes, if this was a normal cheating scenario, and yes, Chloe did seduce him or whatever. We're gonna we're gonna pretend that was the case right now for this illustration. So yes, Chloe was a seductress and she seduced Benjo and Benjo cheated, they had an affair. So to me, like if I am Emil in this relationship and my Benjo cheated on me with somebody else, like yes, I'm gonna be frustrated, irritated, and I may have words for this Chloe mistress over here, but you bet your ass the majority of my wrath and frustration is going to be directed at the person that I am in the relationship with. Like, yes, I may be irritated with this outside person, but that outside person did not make a commitment to me. That outside person did not take vows with me on a beach. That outside person did not say that, you know, they would always love me, be loyal, faithful, whatever to me. It's this person in a relationship, so why am I 
sort of crying with this person in a relationship and then skirting around the fact that they're the ones who stepped outside my relationship and I, now I'm going to go yell at this person over here. Like it's always, it's a pet peeve of mine. I'm like, I don't understand that logic. I don't understand the thought process of I'm going to go yell at this person who was not involved in my relationship for the fact that the, that my partner stepped out and cheated on me. Like, no, fuck that shit. I'm going to read my partner a new asshole. We might, you know, deal with this and, you know, repair the situation in the end, but my wrath is directed at the person who stepped outside of my relationship. V very plain and simple in my head. So when Emil was sitting here yelling at her, like, oh, you need to leave, you need to pack up, you need to get out. I'm like, again, why are we screaming at this person who was not a part of your marriage? Why are we not directing these feelings towards the person who stepped outside of your marriage. Why are we screaming at this victim right now who... It irritates me. It irritates me. It irritates me. It irritates me. I don't like it. I don't like it. I expect better from these people, from these characters, and I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. But, like I said, it's very real. It's real. It's real scenarios that happen in the real world, and if anything, you know, it... It evoked an emotion in me, so in that case, Vince, good job with that. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like the scenario. I don't like the scenario we're putting them in. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. But we just have to wait and see. But yeah, those are my general thoughts. Um, and yeah, so let me know what you think. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction, maybe or at least my rantings there towards the end maybe maybe not i don't know but if you done, did don't forget to like comment subscribe share turn on notifications to so be notified when all my shenanigans get posted if there's anything else you'd like me to react to be sure to leave it down in the comments i'll get to it as soon as i possibly can if you'd like to support the channel in other ways you're more than welcome to join us over on patreon you don't have to but you're more than welcome to if you want to and i'll see you guys in my next video love ya Mwah. And before you guys go, a shout out to my amazing patrons. I can't begin to express how thankful I am for your support. And if you guys would like to join us over on Patreon, the link is down in the description. Love you guys.